Hi friends, I'm Tammy Kay. Welcome to my channel. Today we are focusing on really loose watercolor florals, but we're going to be using a table easel. All right, so you can see me here. Hi guys. I'm just setting up my table easel. This is really nice. It's from Medium. They sent it to me and I wanted to demo it for you guys. So it's lovely because you can do it all the way upright or, you know, with watercolor, you want it to set back a little bit. So I've got these little screws on the sides and we're just loosening them up so that we can adjust it to where we want it to go. So I'm showing you here the highest level and then we're just backing it up just a tad because with watercolor, because of the liquid nature of the paint, you don't want it to be, shall we say, straight up. It's going to start you know, bleeding down and the water is going to move down and it's gonna create some streaks that you probably aren't wanting. So I've sprayed down my paints here and I'm using a brush from Christy Rice. This is a large chunky dagger brush and I absolutely love it. So I'm making some really light marks, really light paint here. I don't have a lot of saturation. And we're just gonna do some wispy marks for these little petals. These are very loose. You can see I've mixed a lot of water in with this paint. You can also see the water beads. I've switched it up to a bit of a pink color now instead of that reddish one. And you'll notice when you're painting upright, I am getting these little water beads that are wanting to run down, but because there's no water underneath where the petal ends, you're not gonna get it moving unless the bead has so much water in it. So I'm just poking in some a little bit more saturated pink paint here just to add some pizzazz and some interest in this painting. Now we're doing two layers for these florals and the second flower I'm going to use this red. It's a nice orangey bright red color and it's a bit more saturated to start with. So you can see I'm creating these really loose brush strokes. I've added really light watery mix now for the next petals because I want to have some light values and some dark values as well before we add in our centers when things are dry. And now I'm just going to remove some paint here, take a clean damp brush and you dab it on your paper towel and then you just remove some of that paint because some of the water and the paint is gonna be a lot when you're upright here. So now we're gonna do the same type of bloom, but a yellow. Now, why do you wanna paint with an easel? Do you have to when you watercolor paint? Absolutely not. There is no requirement for it as I'm just creating some multi-colored florals here. Um, we're doing some light values and dark values. That just means the lightness and darkness of a color. And then we're adding in some different colors as well, just to be creative and fun. So painting up right for me, I haven't done it very often. And this is the first time I'm using this easel. And my goodness, guys, I absolutely loved it so much because I really struggled to paint loose florals in the beginning when I was really trying. And then as we're adding in our stems with a really thin brush, and then I was able to pick up a loose floral style, but adding this layer to it um, created even more of a loose style for me. And I just, I'm falling in love with this easel. Uh, you don't need it, but it's just a fun extra tool to have. So now we're going to start with that dyer brush, adding in some little blossoms, little uh, buds of your florals. And, you know, just vary up the colors here. And you can see those water beads are collecting, but that's okay. It's going to dry and it's going to be fine. It just adds a little pizzazz. Let's do some leaves now. This dagger brush is wonderful for this. I'm literally just kind of dabbing the brush, scooting it around on the paper, scrubbing it, and look at the gorgeous shapes you're getting. Not a lot of effort. With a round brush, you kind of have to create those leaf shapes. Sometimes you do C curve shapes and put them together. But with a, a fat brush like this and with this shape, you can get some really organic shapes that come out of this when it comes to your leaves and your petals. And I think that's what helps to loosen up my paintings as well. So at this point, we can add some splatter, which is just really light paint and just kind of tapping your brush so that that splatter goes all over, which I love because it just brings in a really nice, loose and magical look to your painting. So now that we have our first base layer down, we are gonna start adding in our centers. Not everything is completely dry, but that's okay. You can see there's water beads on the petals, but right now I'm gonna mix up a nice uh, yellow ochre with a thin number two round brush. And we're just gonna make these little brush strokes and you can leave some white space in the middle of things. If you'd like to fill in the center, you can, or you can just leave that open as well. So I'm holding the brush quite loosely and I'm painting quite quickly. Now, if you ever feel like things are being painted too fast, just pause the video and go at your own pace. 
So guys, I want to let you know that if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future videos and posts as we're painting in the rest of these centers. And I have several things to tell you. First of all, I teach watercolor over on Skillshare. These are longer courses and classes, and you can click the link in the description for a 30 day trial to watch my classes as well as all the classes of other teachers. I also have a membership on Patreon where you can get exclusive tutorials, bonus content, all the fun things as we are stippling in that green center for these flowers. And finally, guys, if this is before October, 2024, we are going to be going on an art retreat in Italy. So you can click the link in the description as well for more information. And we will be painting and learning to let go of perfectionism and just creating a unique loose style. So now that my petals are pretty dry, I'm just adding in some more concentrated paint, just a little bit here and there. So the paint has less water mixed in, a little bit more of the paint right now. This one particularly, bright and lovely, is a little bit more saturated than the pink one. And so I'm adding in shadows and I'm adding in texture. And the idea behind this is just to create a three-dimensional flower that stands off the page. It's not flat and has a lot of personality and pizzazz. So for this yellow one, I am going with a nice kind of dark orangey color. It's not too bright, but it's gonna show up really nicely against this yellow floral. Now you can do different colors to create your dimensions, or you can even do a more concentrated, saturated version of the base color that you did originally. Now what I'm doing here is taking a clean damp brush. I'm just spreading out some of that color so that I don't have really harsh lines in some areas. And you can see that we have various shades of colors. We have various values and we're just creating a nice loose look that is effortless or at least it looks effortless hopefully it feels effortless as well if you ever feel frustrated with this process take a deep breath enjoy the process of painting and remind yourself this is just practice and as a mental health therapist i have to remind myself about this all the time thanks for being here guys happy painting and happy mental health